We are back now with how bullying may have driven a teen to kill. It's part of our investigation looking back at the 1988 shooting at Atlantic Shores Christian School. Nicholas Elliott has been in prison 29 years ever since he was 16 years old. He claims constant bullying by a classmate led him to bring a gun, ammunition, and homemade bombs to school. A teacher would die. It's a frightening situation that's now played out across the nation over and over since that shooting. Turn on your side, Andy Fox now with bullying to the brink. Andy? And Anita, he got a life sentence for that. Never before and never since has a student killed on a school campus in Hampton Roads history. Nicholas Elliott has said he saw no light at the end of the tunnel. Tonight, an expert tells us why this case matters in the discussion on bullying. Bullying to the brink, it does occur. And bullying expert Bobby Kipper says bullying to the brink happened at Atlantic Shores Christian School December 16th, 1988. You know, in 88, we were still calling it child's play. And, um, we just thought that teasing was part of going to school. On that dark day, 16-year-old Nicholas Elliott went looking to shoot the bully who tormented him. He ended up shooting teacher Karen Farley, wounding an assistant principal, and would have shot the bully here in this classroom had his gun not jammed. We called Elliott, who is incarcerated at the Nottaway Correctional Center. He's been in prison 29 years. You said that the constant torment of bullying wore you down. What did you mean by that? It breaks down your resolve and your uh, sense of peace and well-being. This takes away all your hope. It's, it's very disheartening. Kipper calls Atlantic Shores ground zero for bullying, putting it on the map for how we need to deal with bullying. A person who's victimized by bullying, they tend to take it into their own hands. Now, whether that's right or wrong, that is behavior. And sooner or later, people will strike back. The bully didn't only go after Nicholas. He went after Karen Farley's daughter, Laura, and her brother, Will, even after their mother had been killed. Many years later on Facebook, the bully reached out to Laura and apologized. I am so sorry for, you know, your mom being killed. If, um, if I hadn't, you know, been ugly to Nicholas, he wouldn't have done it. Um, he apologized about being ugly to me. And can you imagine what the feeling of not only this individual, but other individuals in our society that realize how bad they have treated people along the way and how this continues because no one really puts a stop to it. In hindsight, Kipper doesn't blame the teachers. It was a different time. Back in 88, we probably didn't have the same available services and counseling. Now it is a state law in Virginia that school districts have to have and adopt a policy to deal with bullying. Kipper says because of this case, we see what happens when good people say nothing. And if you're going to just tolerate your friends or people that you know being abused and bullied, then you're actually part of the bullying. Adults need to stand up when they see stuff like that going on. They need to be more proactive and in, in just interject in situations like that. As for Nicholas, he blames only himself. I don't put any blame for any of this on anybody, even person that, you know, was bullying me or whatever, I don't put the blame on them because it's, it's, it's my fault how I reacted. One final message from Nicholas Elliott, who has spent 29 years in prison. He told us over the phone, I say this, violence solves nothing. It only makes matters worse. The hard stuff you think you are going through out there is nothing compared to what you go through in here. I'm Andy Fox, 10 on your side.